It's the first of May, pinching a punch, but also the end of the cyclone season. Officially, we are out of it. And Liz is with me now. A very good morning to you, Liz. Welcome to News Breakfast. Thank you. Um, good morning to you, Nate. Now, I, first of all, is it really the end of the cyclone season on the 30th of April and the start of the dry on the 1st of May? Or have we just drawn a, bit, a line in the sand? Well, we've really drawn a bit of a line in the sand there. I don't think the atmosphere really <laughs> understands our calendar that well. Um, but it really, um, when we define the cyclone season, we kind of define that period of time um, when you know, 98%, 95 to 98% of the cyclones happen. But we've actually had cyclones every month of the year. Yeah, you know, on our record in the last 40 years. Wow, that, that's wild because, uh, you know, the atmosphere and also the oceans need to be in a certain state, of enough heat, for example, yeah. for cyclones to happen. So, what, you can even get them in the middle of winter? You can, that's right, as long as there's a lot, lot enough heat in the ocean, as you say, and just simply the right atmospheric conditions, it can happen. Right, so we're not ruling out a late season cyclone just yet. Not just yet. In fact, if you look at the sea surface temperatures around northern Australia, they're actually still pretty warm. Mm. They're cooling off, but yeah, they're, they're well above the threshold for cyclone development. Uh, I felt like I was pretty darn busy this year with cyclones. How did it compare to standard? Um, we were about average, maybe just a little bit above average, but it feels like it was a bit busy because we've been below average for the last few years. Um, I right. think it's been um, over 10 years since we actually had an average season. So what's been driving that? Is it the global sea temperatures? Because I know they've been up for a long time now. Um, it is certainly, um, our sea surface temperatures have been anomalously high. Mm -hmm. um, up to two to three degrees warm all around Australia, actually. So that's a big driver of tropical cyclones. Um, but we've also had a very strong active um, season for a particular type of weather system that passes through our region every 40 to 50 days. And that's called the Madden Julian Oscillation. Ah, the MJO. The MJO. And that triggers um, the conditions for really strong thunderstorms, mm -hmm. which is a driver for tropical cyclone development. So uh, one of the things I did note about this year, Alfred in particular, coming very, very low, maintaining a lot of its strength as it slowly moved in towards Brisbane earlier in the year. I know it's not the first time, but it's pretty rare to get cyclones that far south, right? That's correct. It is pretty rare. I think it's been, we've had them pass near Brisbane, but not, um, not come in on the coast the way that Alfred did. Hmm. Is that a one-off anomaly or is that something we need to be a little bit more concerned about? It's happened before, it can happen again. Um, there were just some unusual conditions in the synoptic patterns mm. that, um, that caused Alfred to do kind of the strange thing it did. They normally head off into the, the South Pacific, yeah. right? Um, but in this case, um, it curved back into to Brisbane and it can happen again. How are cyclones changing their behaviour or, or in, indeed are they? They, they are changing their behaviour, but around Australia, we don't have a good handle on that right now. Mm. Most of the studies that have looked at how they're changing and how they might change in the future have been done in the Northern Hemisphere. And they have some understanding that, you know, we expect maybe less of them, but higher frequency of the more intense ones mm. and maybe a little bit more intense as well. So that sort of end of the spectrum's pushing to the higher intensity. More rainfall, we're already seeing that pattern. We're mm. seeing more rainfall with the cyclones. We're seeing them with the tropical lows. Yeah, you don't even need to have a cyclone to get massive flooding events. Queensland okay. knows exactly what we're talking about. Hi, Dr. Liz Ritchie-Tayo, thank you so much for joining us, having a little bit of nerd nerdery about cyclones. <laughs> it is, it is always, it always makes me a little bit sad at the end of cyclone season because I don't get to do that again for another six months. That's right, well, you're very welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you.